we started the stream on Facebook. All right, I'm not finding it. I wanted to watch for comments in case I can. Oh, there we are. Well, I guess we are live now. Oh, I've got to admit somebody to the waiting room there. It's my sweet wife. All righty. Well, good evening. Okie dokie. So the Zoom is on the stream. That is so, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Remarkable. Remarkable. Amazing. The technology is just unbelievable. I even got to see an up close of uh, Doug Shields' eyes a while ago, and now I see that he is no, no longer here. So, oh, well, I don't know where he went. <laughs> Doug, if you're listening, you're welcome to come back. Well, good evening. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. We've got a number of people that are on Facebook watching and uh, four or five folks on, on the Zoom. Uh, Bill has been playing with the technology, and uh, if you're watching it on Facebook, I think you are seeing uh, me on uh, the Zoom. So I'm not sure how that works for everybody, but um, that's where we are. I'm really glad uh, you are here for uh, the latest edition of what I'm calling Life Together. When the pandemic first started, um, I was trying to find some way for us to be together, some way uh, not so much to go really deep into scripture, but as a way to connect and 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 be together and so i started this life with less thing uh, in the living room of my home and, and that's where it stayed for the longest time until we felt like we could come back and try to do things um at the building over the last several months we've tried to make our study uh be um more in depth and uh six weeks ago or six this is the sixth lesson so uh, we've had five lessons so far with a break for Christmas and New Year's. Um, we've had five lessons so far on a book written by, or, or being guided kind of somewhat by a book written by Tom Rayner called I Will. Uh, and the whole study has been about moving from I want to I will. And I've got... Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got uh, three pages of pretty good notes with a number of scriptures uh, that I wanted us to look at tonight. And um, I am uh, doing something that's awkward and difficult for me. I am changing the entire direction of what we're doing tonight, and I'm not going uh, to use the material uh, that I have prepared. Um, I made a, a shift uh, probably about 45 uh, minutes ago uh, because uh, the more I became aware of, of things that had happened in our nation's capital today, uh, the more I have read uh, posts from people whom I uh, know and respect and love on Facebook and Twitter and, and, and other things like that, uh, the more I felt like um, I needed to have a little bit more of a prophetic voice, at least from a sense of foretelling, and, and change our subject a little bit uh, to something that, that's really uh, weighing heavy on, on not only my heart, but lots and lots of other people's hearts. So I'm glad you're here. Um, I'd like for you to grab your Bible and do some scripture reading with me tonight. 
Uh, we'll be talking about things. It's not just going to be all, all scripture reading, uh, but we got some good things I want us to, to look at and consider uh, in, in uh, where we are right now as, as Christians who live in this country. I want to begin by sharing with you from the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Uh, I'll just tell you ahead of time. Oh, there's somebody waiting to come in. Hold on just a second. Um, there you go. I will tell you uh, ahead of time that I um, plan, if I think, if I, if I remember the calendar as I looked at it today, uh, I plan to be done uh, with the book of James by either the first or second on Sunday in in February. Uh, there is a sun, there is a week in February that I'm scheduled uh, to speak at a um, preacher's conference seminar thing uh, at Harding University, and some of that material may find its way into a, a Sunday lesson as well. But when all that's said and done, uh, I intend to spend as long as it takes in the year 2021 to cover the material uh, in the book of Matthew that we call the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it's good, good stuff. It's stuff that we need uh, to look at. It's stuff that we need to, to, to um, have in our lives. But tonight, like I said, I want to do something a little different. And I'd like for you to follow along with me in a number of Scripture readings. The first one, again, is from Matthew 5, uh, the section we call the Beatitudes. I'm just going to read uh, verses 3 through 10. Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Verse 10 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You may have caught, if you're following along, um, that I skipped verse 9, because I wanted to come back and read it separately. Verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Man, how much, how badly does our world need Jesus' followers who will rise up and be peacemakers. Pretty, pretty, um, pretty powerful, pretty pertinent, and pretty needed uh, in this particular time that we find ourselves in. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of of God. If you're online and you have a comment you want to make, I've got my phone uh, where I can see uh, what's happening. I, I, I don't think we've had any comments thus far other than who's watching with us. And um, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I'm glad that, that you're watching. Um, but if you would like to, uh, to make a comment, and, and I would, will try to address it. Those of you who are watching on Zoom, if, if you want to make a comment, uh, you're welcome uh, to do so, and I will try uh, to hear that and, and address it as well. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. You know, being a peacemaker uh, is an unbelievable calling that, that God's children are called to be and, and to do. Most of us, uh, when we live with somebody long enough, when we're around people, as much as we are, 
certain folks. Um, we tend to know what buttons to push. Uh, we tend to know how to get somebody uh, riled up. Uh, we tend to know uh, what statements we might make are going to be inflammatory. We tend to know how um, we can do things that, that, that stir up difficulty and dissension and ugliness and, and problem making. Uh, human nature is we find that pretty easy to do. Except Jesus is calling us to an entirely different standard. And when I read these Beatitudes and I, I see him talking about the poor in spirit, I see him talking about those who are humble and merciful uh, and, and, and talking about those who are peacemakers, uh, it's readily evident to me that, that what I'm supposed to do as a child of God is something uh, totally different than the standards uh, the world tends to operate by. So if you're in the book of Matthew in chapter 5, I'd like to continue on in this chapter, and I'd like for you to pick up with me in verse 43. In verse 43 and following to the end of the chapter, Jesus, continuing in his sermon, says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Man, being perfect is, is not something uh, I have ever felt like I could aspire to. Uh, I'd like to think that, that I am at times, but, but the reality is uh, I'm as flawed and as broken and as difficult as the next person. And I find it really hard uh, to be anywhere close to being perfect. But yet, at the same time, when, when Jesus tells us to to, to love our neighbors and love our enemies and pray for those who persecute you. He's calling us, he's calling us to a higher standard, a perfect standard, just as our Heavenly Father, just as God is perfect. So this is really powerful stuff, and, and you can make application where uh, where you want, you can make it in your home, you can make it on the job, uh, you can make it uh, with your neighbors, you can make it uh, at church, you can make it uh, in the community we live in at large, uh, you can make it from a political standpoint, uh, you can make it from a societal standpoint, but the reality is it doesn't matter what environment we're talking about, we're called as children of God to an entirely different standard uh, than the world tends to operate from. Those passages of Scripture are, are on my heart today as, as I see the chaos that has enveloped our nation's capital. Again, as I see how people I love and respect uh, react uh, in different ways to, to some of the things that, that we know are happening. And so from there, I want to remind you of, of another passage of Scripture. I'd like to take you uh, a little further in the New Testament to Romans chapter 12. Uh, if you'd like to follow along with me, I, I'm going to be reading out of chapter 12. Uh, I'll probably pick up in verse 9. I think that's where we'll go pick up. And we'll read through the end of the chapter. My friend Prentice has asked me online if I believe the signs of Jesus returning are here. Uh, and uh, Prentice, I just have to tell you, my answer would be uh, that Jesus himself said, no man knows uh, when all of that's going to take place. And I'm just going to have to trust that God's got this and, and, and keep on keeping on while, while I have life. So um, I'm not really looking for signs. Don't think there's any uh, real uh any real 
gravitas toward toward looking uh, for signs of when Jesus is going to return again. Not to be disrespectful, uh, you and I have been friends since we were 12, 13. Um, so you know I love you, but I, I just... I just don't think that's where our focus is supposed to be uh, as we uh, live this Christian life. Romans 12, pick up verse 9 with me, if you will. Did that answer your question okay, Prentice? You can just give me a thumbs up. Verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil, cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another and showing honor. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not, record, re, do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If you've got a pen and you're using uh, a paper Bible, I'd suggest you um, underline verse 18. If you're using an um, electronic version, uh, particularly you version or something like that, uh, I'd, I'd use the highlighter that's built into that, and I'd highlight verse 18. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath because it is written. Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemy is hungry, slap him. Oh, wait a second. It doesn't say that, does it? If your <laughs> enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. If I were highlighting or underlining, um, I would also highlight or underline verse 21. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. So you go back to the first part of this passage, and, and what Paul says sounds an awful lot like what Jesus would say. And since Paul's writing by the Spirit, I think we can trust that these are things uh, that Jesus would have said. Uh, but, but I think it's really important to pick up in verse 12 and, and, and catch what he says. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. You add that to, to verse 18 about if, as being uh, as far as possible as it depends on you to live at peace with everyone. And then verse 21, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. And again, I, I want to remind us that as God's children, we are called to a different standard. It hasn't been that long ago uh, on a, in a sermon on a Sunday morning, I talked about um, how that whenever I'm up on stage and I'm, I'm speaking to the church that, that while you may not see it, I do, but there's an imaginary mirror um, here uh, that, that I'm looking at and I'm seeing myself and, and I'm speaking to me. And again, I'm speaking to me. I need to be reminded less I need to be reminded to rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, to be persistent in prayer. I need to be uh, reminded that, that, that I'm called to a higher standard, to live at peace with everyone as far as it depends on me. I need to be reminded that, that the fact is none of us will ever conquer evil uh, unless we do it with good. And so we need to make sure that we're not being conquered by evil. We're being people of peace, a higher standard, a higher standard. Isn't that important to remind ourselves that, that no matter what happens in this world, 
uh, no matter what happens in, in, in our lives, we are called uh, to live as followers of Jesus, a higher standard. Again, if you have any comments or questions you want to ask, uh, feel free. I am watching uh, myself on the phone uh, for Facebook and um, got YouTube or blah, blah, blah. I've got Zoom up here and uh, if there's anything anybody wants to say there, all you have to do is turn your picture on and wave at me and I can uh, let you talk. And apparently your volume will go out to everybody watching it on Facebook and YouTube. So that's pretty cool too. So higher standard. Uh, if you would turn in your Bibles uh, to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, we're going to read starting in verse 11 and going through uh, the very end of the chapter. Dear friends, Peter writes, I urge you as strangers and exiles to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against the soul. I want you to think about that verse just a little bit before we continue on in this passage. I want to urge you as strangers and exiles. What, what are we strangers and exiles from? World. Somebody's speaking. I'm not sure who it is. What was that? So, okay. I'll answer it. Um, you know, we sing this song about the world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Now, this world is not our home. We, we're called to live in a different way, a different standard. So I urge you as strangers and exiles to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that when they slander you as evildoers, they will observe your good works and will glorify God on the day he visits. Verse 13. Submit to every human authority because of the Lord, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors as those sent out by him to punish those who do what is evil and to praise those who do what is good. For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. Talk about a different standard of life. It's God's will that we silence the ignorance of foolish people, excuse me, by doing good. I don't know about you, but far too often in my life, um, that's the exact opposite of what I have done. I, I have opened my mouth and shown myself to be just as foolish as those around me. So verse 16, um, Peter says, submit as free people, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but as God's slaves, honor everyone, love the brothers and sisters, fear God, honor the emperor. Household slaves, submit to your masters with all reverence, not only to the good and gentle ones, but also to the cruel. For it, it brings favor if because of a consciousness of God, someone endures grief from suffering unjustly. For what credit is there if when you do wrong and are beaten, you endure it? But when you do what is good and suffer, if you endure it, if you endure it, this brings favor with God. Again, a different standard. For you were called to do this, this different standard. You were called to do this because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He did not commit sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but you have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. A different standard. Sometime, uh, I don't remember the exact day, uh, but it was in April of 1986. 
I stood in a military entrance processing station, MEP station, in Jackson, Mississippi, and I raised my right hand and I took an oath of allegiance to the Constitution of the United States of America. I took that oath seriously. If you came to my, if you've never walked in my office, um, you can, if you, when you walk in my office, one of the first things you see is what uh, some folks call an I love me wall. Um, but I have a whole wall in my office uh, that is uh, one framed certificate or award after another uh, that I earned uh, in the United States Navy. Uh, there's a shadow box on the wall with all of the uh, ribbons and, and medals uh, that I earned during the time of my service. There is a picture of me in one of my training schools in, in dress white uniform. Uh, there is a picture of uh, the guided missile cruiser uh, that I served aboard for four and a half years. Uh, did time on that ship in the Persian Gulf uh, during a lot of difficult things that we uh, were involved in as a country. Uh, I was a gung-ho sailor. I loved uh, serving the country. I loved um, being at sea. I enjoyed greatly uh, my time in the U.S. Navy. Uh, some of that has caused problems for people around me. Uh, I tend to be the one at the house that's obsessive compulsive about everybody putting their stuff up because uh, in the Navy you have such a small uh, area in your birthing compartment, such a small place to store stuff that, you know, everything has a place and, and everything had to be in its place. Um, and if truth were to be told, I um, still tend to fold my, my T-shirts and stuff like that the way we had to learn how to fold them uh, all those years ago in boot camp. I am proud of the time I spent in the U.S. military. But I need you to know this. While I am a citizen of the United States of America, my real citizenship, my true citizenship is in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. I don't know who's saying amen, can't tell, but thank you. My true allegiance is follow, to follow the Prince of Peace. If you flip backwards into the Old Testament to uh, the book of, of Isaiah... Chapter 9. Part of me wants to apologize for this not being any more polished or put together, but, but I'm serious when I tell you I sat down uh, on my bed uh, like 15 minutes before we left the house um, and, and changed my entire focus to put this together. But in Isaiah chapter 9, in verse 6, the Bible reads, For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. We all know, at least I hope we know, that that is a prophecy of, of Jesus. The verse continues, He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and prince of peace. That is who my true allegiance belongs to. I can be a good citizen of our country. I can be 
a good citizen of this state. I can be a good citizen of, of this community. But at the end of the day, my true, my real allegiance belongs to Jesus. If you were to go back into the New Testament, to the Gospel of John, in, in chapter 14 of John, in verse 27, uh, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. You know, if Jesus can give us peace, if Jesus can tell us uh, that whatever could trouble us or whatever could give us fear in this world doesn't really matter because he's giving us the peace we need. And can we not be, in whatever circumstances befall us, a people who follow the standard of the Prince of Peace? In John chapter 16, in John chapter 16, in verse 33, uh, Let me just back up to verse 31. Jesus responded then, Do you now believe? Indeed, an hour is coming and has come when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. Yes. And if the Father is with Jesus, and we are with Jesus, then the Father is with us too. We can have peace. Yes. I don't want to get in to politics. I, I don't want to get into who's right, and who's wrong. I don't want to get into to what we need to do differently as a country. I don't want to talk about uh, anything that has anything whatsoever uh, to do with government and government governing and politics and, and all the stuff that swirls around that. Except I want to follow the politics of the Prince of Peace. And he calls me to an entirely different standard than the standard of the world. I don't know what's going to happen in our nation's capital uh, before this day is through. I don't know how uh, some of that mess will play out tomorrow, uh, the day after that, next week, and on through the rest of this year. I just know that whatever goes on there should not be the kind of thing that sets Christian against Christian, yes. that makes brothers and sisters in Christ be at odds with one another. Because this world, this country, is not my real home. Amen. My home is with Jesus. My home is with the Lord. So, um, nobody else has really had any conversation. I think I heard an amen or two off of those who are on Zoom. Uh, but I want you to know this. I can be as politically minded as the next person. I can get caught up in, in my own uh, political views. I can get wound up about things that happen uh, in our nation's government that, that irritate me, that bug me, and maybe even 
make me fearful to some degree. But I don't want that man. I don't want that guy. I don't want that person to be the person the world sees. I want them to see the Prince of Peace living in me. Amen. Amen. So, if there are no other comments, I'd like for us to pray together for just a moment. Not, not only for our country, uh, but for ourselves. Uh, to make sure that we have the right perspective. To understand where our true priorities lie. To be a people who follow and take our allegiance with the Prince of Peace. Would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you so much for our blessings. Uh, they are far more uh, than we ever really deserve. Yes. For most of us, we have lived uh, the vast majority of our lives uh, in a country uh, where we were granted freedom, uh, where we didn't even have to work to have them. They were just a part of our culture. And Lord, sometimes when when uh, we get bent out of shape over things that, that the government does or people who work in our government do, uh, we can allow that to have uh, more of an emphasis in our lives than we should. Lord, while I ask that you heal our land, that, that you help people uh, do what is right and only what is right, my true concern is, Lord, uh, that we be the people that honor and follow you regardless of what happens in this world. Yes. May we be, may we be a people of peace. Yes, Lord. May we be peacemakers. May we be people who don't draw lines in the sand but seek to embrace uh, the world around us uh, in a life-altering, life-changing way so that they might know God's love um, from the love that we share with them. Yes. I ask that you bless our nation. I ask that you bless our state. I ask that you bless the Oxford, the Fayette University community, uh, that you help us to be uh, at peace with one another. Lord, I ask that you... Uh, that you reframe what questions or discussions or differences of opinion or uh, differences in, in understanding Scripture, even within our own church. Yes. That we might be people who pursue peace, who become peacemakers. Lord, I ask that you help us to be reminded uh, that our calling is to love you, to love others. Our calling is to... Uh, deny ourselves, uh, to sacrifice our own lives, to pick up our cross and follow the Prince of Peace. Yes. yes. Forgive us and bless us and help us in all that we do. For it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, part of me wants to apologize for uh, going off script and doing something different than what I had planned, but there's always next week. Uh, and we'll come back and look at, at the topic of I will, the sixth lesson um, next week. Uh, it will fit very well with what we've talked about tonight and what we are talking about um, as a church family as we move forward uh, into this new year uh, with new dreams, new goals, new visions, and new opportunities. Uh, may God uh, bless each and every one of you. And if you can be here Sunday, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm excited already to preach, and we will have a good day. Thank you again. God bless. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. So timely. So Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Good night, y'all.